and the Hittites and the Pezzarites and the Canaanites and the Hivites and the Jebusites, and I will cut them off. Thou shalt not bow down to their gods, nor serve them, nor do after their works, but thou shalt utterly overthrow them and quite break down thy their images. And ye shall serve the Lord your God, and he shall bless thy bread and thy water. And I will take sickness away from the midst of thee. There shall nothing cast their young, nor be barren in the land. The number of thy days I will fulfill. I will send my fear before thee and will destroy all the people to whom thou shalt come. And I will make all thine enemies turn their backs unto thee. And I will send hornets before thee. And I will drive out the Hivite and the Canaanite and the Hittite from before thee. I will not drive them out from before thee in one year, lest the land become desolate and the beast of the field multiply against thee. By little and little, I will drive them out before thee. Until thy be increased and inherit the land and I will set thy bounds. This is Pentecostal temple from the Red Sea, even unto the sea of the Philistines and from the desert unto the river. God got boundaries. He wants you to conquer. For I will deliver the inhabitants of the land into your hands. Because they got to be saved. And thou shalt drive them out before thee. The angel of the church. And as you can suspect that this is a night of divine revelation that comes from having a right walk with God. When you study the scriptures, you will see that God has put uh, ministry into the church. If you look at Ephesians 4 and 11, he says he gave apostles and prophets and evangelists and pastors and teachers, and they have been put there for the perfecting of the saints and for the work of the ministry and for the edifying of the body of Christ till we all come into the unity of the faith and then unto the knowledge of the Son of God and unto a perfect man, unto the measure of the stature of the fullness of Christ. So in our churches, which is God's precious bride, he has set these gifts in the church in order to perfect the church, to train the church, to walk in faith, to do ministry, to do the will of God concerning his uh, designated purpose that is found in Jesus Christ and to make the church holy and prepared as a bride for Jesus Christ at his second coming. And these things are put in the church for the benefit of ministry. And as soon as we as a church will learn how to to, uh, to walk in the ministry that's supplied to us through our leaders and through our giftings, we are then able to go on to more mature things. Most of our ministry is built upon and has been designated 
as trying to get us to where we ought to be. Most of our servant sermons revolve around get out of sin, get along with each other, grow up, mature, be what you need to be, and walk like God has designed for you to walk. But there is another level of ministry. There is a greater anointing that you must receive from God past just trying to get mature. If you would ask the question, what are we getting mature for? There is something that God wants you to be involved in and things that he wants you to do as mature saints. But we are missing the mark because we are not maturing at the rate at which Christ wants us to mature. And therefore, the ministry gifts in the church are never releasing the anointing to do the greater works that God has designed for the church to do. And God wants us to be better, to do more, and to walk in a greater anointing in him as soon as we embrace the gifts that God has put in the church to mature us. Those gifts of apostle and prophet and evangelists and pastors and teachers are great and necessary for the church. But I want to talk to you about another position of anointing and revelation that abides in this church that many of us have not heard or listened to with a deliberate ear. And that is the angel of the church. You see, many of us don't hear him because we are too immature and don't recognize his voice when he speaks. The angel of the church is a special anointing that God gives to his church. In Revelation 1, he talked about seven, which means that in the city of Greenville or any city or place that we go, there is not an angel from the Lord in every church. There are facilities that go under the guise of church but have not matured enough to be recognized by God that he will send an angel to that house. And therefore, if you have an angel, and tell your neighbor, and you do, then you must learn to hear the voice of the angel. Exodus 23 talks about what happens when a church, and, and here he is talking to his people that he called out of Egypt and brought them into the promised land, And was giving them instruction in how to take charge and get the victory in their walk and assignment with God. And he says that he would send an angel before them. And God says, I have stars in the church. Stars are the authority, the, the star is the, 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 the poignant light in the church that reveals and gives the, the will of God for those who are mature enough to walk in his will. We don't give jobs to babies. We don't assign children to go out into the world to work. They have to to be trained and matured in order to go out and do what it is 
in order to make a living for